So Dr. Kim, what are some of the most common communication breakdowns that you see? It's kind of hard because there's, there's a lot, you know, and if, when I see a different couple, I think, oh yeah, they're breaking down this way. But I would, I would say not listening is huge. Uh, when somebody said something, especially if, if your spouse has said something that's kind of meaningful or, or emotional to them and, and you just don't respond like you heard anything at all, that's going to, that's going to break down your communication. It's going to think, oh, I'm not going to share at that level anymore. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Or you just get mad because the person's not listening to you. Uh, speaking before you think, which kind of then goes into not choosing your battles. Well, how often we do that often I, I have something's got out of my mouth and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, if I could really just catch those words before they hit her ears. So, um, and I think we've all been there, but yet depending on what you say and how you say it, it can certainly stop the communication at that point. It can inhibit com communication. It can shut down your spouse. So those are definitely breakdowns, uh, not taking responsibility. I see this so much that, that someone has to be right, or they want to blame their spouse and they will not take responsibility. Well, if you're in a relationship where you're always the one who's wrong and your spouse is always the one that's right, you're not going to communicate well because mm -hmm. nothing you can do is going to be good enough. But, you know, you're, they're just, you're just stuck. And so you're not going to communicate well. And then the other thing, and I think some couples do really well in not doing this, but the couples where it happens, I think it really causes problems. It's bringing up the past. And we talk about it in conflict resolution, things like that. But if you have an issue in the past and you have resolved it, it's got to stay in the past and you haven't resolved it, then resolve it. But those things you can't keep bringing up the, you know, and, and I know that's hard sometimes because maybe this is the, the hundredth time that they have gone over the budget and, but deal with today. What happened this month that we went over? Not you have gone over all the time. You've got us in trouble, blah, 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 like that. Now say, say, okay, we're over this month. Let's talk about it. What, what happened? What could we have done different? You know, are we, what do we need to do so that we make our budget come at as, as a team and don't bring up the past? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Dylan and I have uh, struggled with all of those. So are we going to be okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, the reason they came to my mind is because we've done all those okay, cool. ourselves. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're, so and I know the, bad, I know the downside. Yeah. That's right. So if you're listening and you're like, check, 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 you're, it's okay. Well, that's it's why okay. we're talking about this today. It's going to be good. Yeah. Just to add to some of those, I think another common communication breakdown that I see is negative cycles where you're assuming a lot from your like, assuming things about your spouse and kind of expecting the worst from each other. And so you're always assuming things about them and they're never good assumptions at uh, really treating each other like enemies when you do yep. that. Um, another thing that I see is only talking about what you want to talk about. So kind of being selfish in your communication, not having an interest in your spouse or their interests and yeah, just kind of taking over the conversation. If it's not about you, you're not interested. That's a, that's a big problem. And um, I think that one too, if you're an extrovert and your spouse has been introvert it's really easy to do that and not think anything about it but i think over time it lets your introvert spouse just go deeper into that instead of trying to have some conversations where they're going to be involved and you're asking them questions too yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then I think, you know, using strong langu language, whether that is like foul language, yelling or speaking in like strong superlatives, like always and never, that's just a harmful pattern and definitely will break down your communication. Uh, and then lastly, just a cycle of unkind or negative nonverbal communication. So sometimes yeah. these communication breakdowns aren't even the words that you're saying. It's the the facial expressions you're giving each other, what you're doing with each other, with your eyes. Um, yeah, your body posture, all of that makes a huge difference and can definitely cause some major communication breakdown.